new iMacs with all new bezel thin and no chin designs and new Mac Pros with both M1 and Intel inside? That's according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who says Apple might be ready to give their desktops, well, the biggest upgrade in a decade. Here's what he said and what it all just really means. Sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. Only a small percentage of you watching my videos are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy my channel, hit that button and let's do this. First up, Apple's gonna slim down the thick black borders around the iMac screen and do away with that sizable metal chin area in favor of a design that's similar to Apple's Pro Display XDR. Because recent lack of updates aside, Apple kept their iMacs and LED and Thunderbolt designs pretty much in lockstep while they lasted. And the iMac really is the only big battleground left in the rapidly ending war on bezels. Plus getting rid of the bulge on the back and going finally fully flat will just fit right into Apple's current design language. The design language that kicked off with the iPad Pro almost three years ago now. And since part of the iMac's allure has always been just how good it looks in the living room, on the desk and in front of house setups, or at least it will be again when the world stops ending. And when it goes all modern and boxy, it'll look that part again, it'll turn heads again. Next up, two new models that'll replace the current 21.5 inch and 27 inch iMacs. And Mark doesn't specify at all if the displays will remain the same size with Apple shrinking down the bezels like they did with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro or if they're gonna increase the size of the display instead, like they did with the 11 inch iPad Pro. And there have also been several reports of a third option, all new display sizes across the board, 24 inches and 32 inches, which yeah, could be too big for some desks and some users, but for others could just finally be big enough. And count me in that camp, because from IPS to 5K to P3 to nano texture, the iMac has always just been about that display. So while we might still be a year or two away from mini LED at that scale, I think Apple's gonna just go all out on everything else. And the new models will use next generation versions of Apple's Mac processors, like the upcoming 2021 MacBook Pros. And I covered those MacBooks Pro in a previous video, so I'll drop a link for that in the description. But if by next generation, Mark really, really means next generation, as in next generation Apple Silicon IP, then we'd be looking at something like the M2. In other words, based on the same architecture as the A15 chipset expected to drop with the 2021 iPhone later this year. And with something like the usual single core performance increases and multi-core multiplier that we'd expect to come with it. But if not, if by next generation, Mark actually means next version, then we'd be looking at something closer akin to an M1, but with just a plethora of additional performance and graphics cores, 12, 16, 32, 64, more. It'd be similar if not the same single core perf as the M1, depending on how hot and fast they clock it and let it run. But the multi-core would be just Redonkulous. Apple is also working on a pair of new Mac Pro desktop computers, one using the same design as the current version and maybe even continuing to use Intel processors, which I think, I mean, I don't know, because my guess is Apple has given themselves two years to transition the entire Mac lineup to their own silicon and the Mac Pro, like last time, is just the last on that list. So giving the current Intel version one final update before then to give people who really want or need to remain on the Intel platform for as long as possible because of software compatibility and M series maturity, the best version possible to remain on, if that just makes the kind of sense to me that does and is exactly what Apple did with the iMac last year. Also, a second half-sized version with a design that could invoke nostalgia for the Power Mac G4 Cube. So yeah, just pulling out all that massive, hot, power hungry Intel Xeon and AMD Navi Silicon could let Apple scale the casing down quite a bit all on its own. And if Apple really just really wants to make the fever dreams, the fantasies, the fanfic of every Mac nerd finally come true, then finally making the hitherto mythical X Mac or mini tower reality, especially by folding in some more retro future chic design would be just one hell of a way to do it. Apple's also started early development of a lower priced external monitor. And yeah, talk about making dreams come true because when Apple canceled their displays a few years ago and went in with LG to produce 
the same panels as the iMac, but with just nothing approaching Apple's fit, finish, or design flair, it was super, super depressing for all of us who wanted an all Mac setup. Then the Pro Display came out, basically 6K for 6K. And it was just beyond the needs and budgets of anyone outside indie studios, or yeah, just wicked YouTube flex work. A proper iMac level panel though, in a properly priced Apple display, that just sells itself, like Nebula, which is about to feature my very first original. And it's all about how Apple's biggest ever product had the biggest ever effect on my life and the lives of other creators like MKBHD. But there was no question that was a game changer phone that was ahead of its time. I, Justine. The iPhone really I mean, it has changed, I mean, my life in so many ways. John Gruber. It was the keynote every Apple fan had always wanted Apple to deliver. And many more, all of us sharing our memories, our favorites, and our hopes for the iPhone future. And it'll be available soon and exclusively on Nebula, where you can also find exclusive bonus content and extended versions of many of my videos and ad-free versions of all of them. So wait, what does any of this have to do with CuriosityStream? We worked out this deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, not only will you get CuriosityStream and all of their documentaries, you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. And because they've just extended their special holiday offer, CuriosityStream is over 40% off right now. That's less than $12 a year and makes it the absolute best deal in streaming. But it's not gonna last long. So click the link in the description and get CuriosityStream for over 40% off and Nebula for free. Just click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For more on all of Apple Silicon Macs, check out the playlist above. I'm going over reviews, previews, analysis, just everything you need to know. So check out the playlist above and I'll see you in the next video.